Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. All right, welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those that are participating and watching us via Facebook. We're sorry we're a little bit late. We try to day on time. We had a scheduled time to bring the podcast to you live at three o'clock uh, this afternoon. So a few minutes late with some technical difficulties. But before I get started and invite my guest in, let me just remind everyone, um, you know, for almost 11 years, we've been doing the live radio and podcast now. And primarily the focus is real estate. We, uh, we've had this show for again, over, uh, we've done over 1700 shows. And we get a little over 10,000 downloads a month. And I want to thank those that continue to participate and support the show. I get a lot of emails and um, texts and, and communication during the week of different topics and different guests that we have on. Most of you know that even though the show is real estate related, we also have been big advocates of the community. We used to do community events before uh, COVID-19 at hotels, different functions, to have guests to really bring awareness to the community. And you know, just as it's a real estate show, it's also we all live in the same community, work in the same community. So we have been doing the best we can of being advocates for many different things over the past, but specifically the last several months, most everybody knows that we have dealt with COVID-19 and it has it's had the effects on our personal business life uh, like no other before. And none of us have ever been really have been faced with this. And uh, so we are in the middle of this epidemic and it's affecting a lot of people in different ways. So what I wanna do on a regular basis, uh, we've had a couple of shows, but I wanna bring a regular awareness to our small businesses and communities. So my guest today is Alex uh, Holt. He is the founder, CEO of um, of Flights Restaurants. Alex, good to have you in today. Hey, thank you, Joe, I appreciate it. We're uh, excited to, uh to get to chat with you a little bit and hopefully shed some light on some stuff that's going on here in Silicon Valley. Yeah, thank you for taking the time. This is important. So I want to, let's do a couple of things here, Alex. If you could first give our listeners and our viewers kind of just a quick idea of your background and then why you started flights, when you started flights, and then give us an idea, you know, just kind of remind everybody your locations. And then once we do that, we could get a little idea of uh, what's been happening with um, the event of COVID-19 and some of the developments over the past couple of months? Sure, quick rundown. Um, I grew up playing hockey. I played professional hockey for like 10 years. I was drafted by the San Jose Sharks in 2003 and um, had a knee injury pretty young and my hockey career never really took off and became what it was supposed to be. So um, I actually ended up founding my wife in Las Vegas of all places. Mm-hmm. And we moved back to basically where she grew up here in the Bay Area in San Jose, Los Gatos, Alma Den area. And um, we've lived here since 2011, 12. And um, I started Holtz Restaurant in 2013. I was a little bit more on the fine, fine dining side. And then basically opened Flights, which was the second location in Campbell in 2017 and then in 2018 we converted holtz and los gatos over to flights as well and then we opened up Burlingame and mountain view uh the same year that was kind of a crazy year <laughs> and i also had my first daughter that year which i don't know how that even seemed possible i uh, looking back at it but um yeah and then we got the opportunity to open up uh or lo- fifth location in the miracle mile shops in las vegas on the strip right across from Bellagio in the Planet Mm -hmm. Hollywood Casino. And uh, that opened in July 2019. And then obviously, you know, March 2020, we got hit with COVID and we've been scrambling ever since. And then, you know, kind of what you were touching on earlier is like, you know, my world was basically flipped upside down the other day when um, I was at work. My 
wife called me crying and um she was like we just got served a lawsuit i was like what for for what like wh what happened mm -hmm. and basically our mountain view landlord decided to sue us for the rent that we owe since basically april uh of this year we've had, had zero sales for 120 days like no sales oh. whatsoever mm -hmm. and the landlord wants full full rent late fees uh attorney fees and all this stuff and uh, yeah it's just not right so i basically <laughs> i started a war and i am gonna fight this publicly so that other landlords hear about this and know about this and know that you know they can't just take advantage of small business owners because we won't have a small business community if that happens and um I'm getting political contacts involved. I'm getting the news involved. I'm getting my friends involved and um, we're raising money to hire really good attorneys. And we're going to try to take this all the way. Very good. You know, it's great to hear. And I think, you know, as a fellow entrepreneur, you have a lot of respect for people who are self-starters and, you know, put their time and energy and, and money on the line to do something like this. And, here you have this this restaurant that's uh, several locations really taking off and doing well. And you know, let's face it, all of us are, you know, we come across adversity, things hit us from time to time, and that's part of life. But this is something no one has ever seen before. None of us, I would think, anyway, um, in our generation are certainly both and forth. But um, so this, this is a, a topic that I really wanted to get out there and share. So what I'll do is on a a couple of times during the show, I want to do a couple of things. One, highlight what's going on with Alex Holt and the business and the restaurant and what he's going with these legal battles to see, you know, what people could do to get involved. But two, really, if there's anything that anyone is, uh, you're listening to this podcast, if you read it on Facebook, if you download it later, and if you have, uh, if there's anything that you could do to help um, Alex or for any matter, any of these small businesses that are struggling, this is certainly a unique story in that he didn't have a landlord that cooperated and now he's taking this thing to different levels and we want to try to support any way we can this is this is a person that's in our community we all are in this together and i know people say that and it's a kind of a cute tagline but it would be nice if all of us could do a bit of whatever we could of whatever resources we have to try to help our small businesses and communities because we live here we work here we eat here there's a lot of things that we do. So I would say if you have any feedback or ideas or anything that you could do, I know that Alex, you did do a, uh, you started to go fund me. Uh, did you do that as well? <laughs> yeah, we started it yesterday. Um, we hasn't really gotten a lot of momentum yet, but mm -hmm. we're starting to get the word out. There was a big uh, Mercury news article that went out today and it will be in the, it will be in the paper tomorrow. And there's some other reporters that are calling. And then tomorrow at two o'clock, we're actually going to do like a little demonstration outside of the landlord's office and okay. uh, rallying some people coming out there just so, so they kind of understand and see that what they did was not right and that they feel guilty that, you know, hopefully they have a heart and yeah. um, it will just make them realize that this is not the right approach. This is not the right way to treat other people. And, you know, like I've been out there hustling and slaving raising money and feeding people, homeless people, the frontline workers, the elderly. You know, we served 120, uh, sorry, we raised $120,000 um, through our other GoFundMe uh, from uh, Feed the Need Bay Area that I started. Uh -huh. okay. And we fed 12,000 people. Like, that's a wow. lot. Wow. That's a lot of people that yeah. would not have been able to eat during this crazy time if we did not help them. So yeah. it just feels like so weird how someone who has like very little, like, you know, we're, we're living month to month, we're renting an apartment, you know, like we're not living in a big mansion and like we're fighting for the people underneath us that like can't really afford to eat and are struggling more than we are. Um, and then you have these like, you know, big landlords that own a bunch of large properties and have millions of dollars in rental income coming in. And obviously it's tough for them too. They have, you know, bills to pay, but like, it's not on mm -hmm. the same level and it's just not right. And that's why I want to bring the light on this. Yeah, no, I'm glad you did because this is, this is really important. So just to summarize too, and I know you mentioned this, Alex. So of the locations, 
it sounds like all the other landlords have been amicable. They've worked with you. They've put together a reasonable plan for you. But this, so this was the only one that really, you know, blindsided you with this. Yeah, I think a lot of landlords understand that, you know, they got to work with their tenants. They're not going to have tenants if they don't. Right. And uh, it's better to get, you know, something than nothing. And, you know, if, if you lose your tenant, that space going to sit empty a long time. This will be a big mm-hmm. depression when we come out right. of this. I, I am 100% sure that when we get through all this, like, you know, right now we're riding on on fake money, printed money from the government. Right. And, you know, like everything is fine. Like it's not really affecting us that hard, right. but it's going to catch up to us. It's going to, and it's going to be a big impact. We're going to see mass unemployment. I bet when the election is done in November, we're going to start hearing the real numbers and the real story about how bad this is for our economy. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I think that I was talking to someone today earlier at, it's a little eerie that you're seeing the stock market rally again. I'm, and I'm guessing it's just based on hopes and optimism that there's going to be a cure, some therapies, a vaccine, et cetera, et cetera. But to me, it still seems a little artificial, a little nerve wracking that yeah, the reality, 100%. yeah, the reality is that at one point, I'm not sure the wake up call, what it's going to be. I, I really don't because I'm not yeah. an expert in this matter, but I would agree with you. I think that over the next several months, as we gun and then end of the year, uh, the numbers are not going to look good anywhere across the board and specifically with small business, unemployment, even though I know some jobs were added again. But I think that was a false ad when you think about it, because everybody was under the assumption that things were going to reopen. And guess what happened? They didn't. Right. hundred um, percent. Right. So what kind of support and feedback and, and kind of reception are you getting from fellow business owners in the community, Alex? Um, I mean, this is still pretty young. Like it's just started, you know, we got served on Saturday. Okay. Uh, we just kind of, I posted yesterday, um, uh, on Facebook about this and I've been getting a lot of outpour and calls and support where everyone's like, this is messed up. And it's kind of funny The the word that I, I've never really heard before and that a lot of people are using randomly is ass hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't even heard that word, but that's the word everyone seems to be using right now. It's kind of funny. It's just a coincidence, I guess. But yeah, so I guess these guys are asshats. That's interesting. (laughs) (laughs) All kinds of new developments when you have a new, uh, I guess when you have an epidemic, there's all kinds of pandemic, I should say, all kinds of things take place. So the main message, uh, there's two things I want to get across today, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Again, I want to chime in every once in a while during the podcast and give my feedback as well. We have a lot of listeners and a lot of followers is number one, do what you can to support small business. Um, you know, specifically restaurants, of course, there are other hundreds and thousands of small business that are not restaurants that also need your help. The message here is that in general, in our communities, let's all try to do what we can, whether it's taking meals out, going to dinner, doing what we can, small businesses, and also things like this. Of course, I'm fortunate to have a podcast that we have a lot of followers. So this is something I could do. This is something we could do to give back. We could keep people in communication. We could keep um, the message going out on a hopefully a little broader scale and see how many more people we can reach. But it's really, it's really important because I think that if I'm not mistaken, Alex, I, I wanted to say the number is, I don't know, somewhere around 75 or 80 percent you know, of our economy is small businesses with 500 or less employees. I could be wrong about that. Um, That seems about right. And the message should be, you know, what can we all do together on a regular basis to at least try to hang on until this is over? There's nothing, I think all of us could agree, there's nothing we could do in terms of coming up with a vaccine. That's up to the experts, the doctors, hopefully they're working, I know they're working on it. But so the question is, what can we do? And so I'll throw it back to you, Alex. What other than some of the obvious things, what comes to your mind? Uh, you have the, the stage here and the listeners. What, what are the kind of some of the things you would suggest people could do to help? Well, I think, I think we're in a world pandemic, right? So right. like what I think the leadership from the very top, like Trump administration and then down to the senators and our, you know, in our states where they need to like sit down with all these businesses and, like this should not be a year of making profit. This should be a year of surviving this 
Like, I think there's a lot of companies right now, like Zoom and Facebook and all these other companies that are just raking in dollars. Like, you know, some of them have done, have done some like, you know, really good stuff, but there's more that can be done. We need to get through this together. And, you know, insurance companies. So one of the big topics, you know, like the big picture of this is that the insurance companies are basically saying this is a force majeure we're not paying out any claim for business interruption right so like all these restaurants and right. other you know <laughs> businesses that are paying thousands of dollars every month to to basically um have insurance in case something like this goes wrong and then this goes wrong and now they're like hiding in the sand and they are they are basically saying, yeah, we're not going to pay out on, right. on this claim. So on the other side of it, we have, you know, uh, the government saying you cannot operate your business for public safety. Sure. You know, we want to save lives. We want to make sure this doesn't spread and kill more people than it has right. to. And, right. and all that, like, I totally get that. And then you have, you know, the landlords and the mortgage companies. So like those three, that triangle right there, that should be where this burden gets carried and yeah. how they solve that and how they figure that out i don't have the answers to but what i do know is that small businesses keep paying their sales tax keep bringing to the economy keep you know doing everything they can do mm -hmm. and we cannot carry this burden the small business community do not have the funds to weather this like we right. just make a living like that's the difference between small right. businesses and big business is that we just make a living we break even or make enough to pay for our house, pay for our car, to hire, to pay for our employees. Exactly. And it's just a, uh, an acre wheel going around versus yeah. big business. You know, they have millions of dollars in profit and shareholders and all this stuff. And I think the message, in my opinion, should just be like, this is not a year to make a profit. This is a year of survival. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, you know, once in a century of a type of a situation. And we need to just get through this together and, yeah. you know, really be a leading star. Like, I feel like Facebook did a pretty good job, you know, going out there saying we're doing all these grants, we're doing all these things. And same thing with, uh, uh, what's his name again? The CEO of uh, Twitter. Oh, yeah. I can't think of his name, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, like, they went out pretty early and said, I'm donating all this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But there is so right. many big businesses out there right. that needs to take this responsibility and step up and say, like, okay, the world is in need right now. Like we're going to be a leader and that's going to benefit them in the long run and position them as like a strong, amazing company that you want to be a part of, you know, like right. but instead they just like, oh, we're going to make a bunch of money this year. It's going to be a great year right. for stockholders. Like that's not the right way to think about it when you're going through a time like this. No, absolutely correct. So of your locations, tell us a little bit about the, the dynamics and the makeup right now, Alex. Are they open all to outside dining give us kind of an idea of what what your business looks like at the moment so well yeah i forgot to answer one of the questions you had earlier as you said the other landlords what they've done and yeah you know like very early i went to them and i was just like hey we need to like work through this together and we came up with a great mm -hmm. plan that you know they're helping out with some forgiveness on rent we're paying as much as we possibly can mm -hmm. and then you know it's going to be enough for them to cover their expenses. And then if business picks back up, we'll pay them more kind of a thing. So right. it's like kind of that team <clears throat> effort, which is what I think we need. Hold, I, I lost the train of thought. What do we say there about that's a, this? That's okay. Point? That's okay. I understand. Don't worry about it. So what the question was, Alex, the kind of the makeup of your restaurants right now, is it outdoor dining? What, what, how oh, yeah. So Mountain View... We're completely shut down. We haven't had nothing in sale since this happened. Mm. And in Campbell, we do have an uh, outdoor patio. So we did a little bit of to go when that was, uh, when that was you know, basically the only option. Uh -huh. uh, very, very, you know, not much. Okay. And then in Los Gatos, we did a big uh, grocery store that we built uh, uh -huh. where people could drive through and pick up groceries. Okay. And then in Burlingame, we were completely closed for a few months. And then when they open up outdoor dining, we opened up there. And it's actually doing really well. And then in Vegas, was completely shut down for, I want to say, three months. And then we recently opened up uh, when they opened up indoor dining there. 
with all the restrictions. So it's kind of all over the place. It's a very challenging time to be a CEO because oh, everything gosh. changes every day. You know, new rules. Uh, the politicians keep making, you know, making changes and going back and forth on what they're saying and, you know, what they did to like the the hairdressers and the massage places. Yeah. It's, it's outrageous to me how they basically say like, you're going to open on the 13th and everyone goes and spend their last few dollars to, you know, make it a safe place to have customers. And then a day later they get shut down again. Like, I don't mm. understand how that's even possible. And then with, and doing that without giving them any more money or any more support or some promise saying like, don't worry, we're going to take care of a couple of months rent for you or something. Right? Like, it's just so crazy. I've always thought, I know, you know, I know it's not this simple, but I've always thought when it came to government, you know, I don't care if it's city, state, local, whatever. What's frustrating to me is, uh, I'll go on a bit of a rant tangent right now, is that the solutions either always raise taxes or someone else will take care of it. In a time like this, you'd love to see government officials, state, local agencies, everybody, you know, almost to have some clause in their contract that says, you know, if you don't come up with some logical solutions over a period of time, then you start losing your own money and your own pay. Because I feel like a lot of these people that are super comfortable, no matter what happens, they're still going to get their pay. I think everybody, you know, should really live in it. If you're a government official, or if you're making decisions about what's going on with small businesses and communities and people's lives, you need to understand what it's like. The pain. To yeah. Right. I mean, it's difficult for someone that's in a very comfortable position getting a payroll or a salary, no matter what they do or decisions they make. It's, it's hard to get those people to try to understand the sense of urgency. And I know that's not going to change overnight, but that's one of the things I think that is the most frustrating part about, and you, you just gave an example of some of the decisions were made on opening up and then closing and um, some of the things that are taking place. I'm not saying that, you know, all of us should have all the answers, but we all should be working together to try to figure out the solution. Right. Yeah. So the, the couple of different ways that we could help Alex, one would be, of course, come to restaurants, show support, you know, buy yourself a meal, buy some food, of course. The other way is to um, participate in the GoFundMe, right? Is that correct? Yeah. And then also just, uh, you know, some people might not be able to afford to actually help monetary way. Um, you know, like the energy that you need to go through something like this and fight other like some injustice like this. Mm -hmm. You need to feel like you have people behind you. So like a like on a Facebook page doesn't cost anything. A comment on a Facebook page doesn't cost anything. A share on a Facebook page doesn't cost anything. There's a lot of things people can do just to spread the word so that people are aware of what's going on. And a friend of a friend of a friend that might be sitting in a nice house feeling like this is crap. Like if I was a landlord or I am a landlord, and I did the right thing. These guys should be outed for this. And they drop a thousand dollars in a donation, you know, like yeah. that's how it works. And that's why it's so important. Like you think like, oh, I can't really afford to do anything right now because I, you know, my salary got cut or I don't have a job or whatever, but you can still do bunch. You can you know, pick up a meal. We actually do free delivery or we hire a bunch of college kids okay. uh, to do our own free deliveries. So you can do that. You can uh, come in and eat. Uh, you can uh, drop a couple of dollars in the GoFundMe page that's going to the legal fees uh, to, mm -hmm. you know, help all small businesses fight this. Okay. And then also, like I said, just share, like, uh, get the word out. That's it. All right. So are you open, are your restaurants open for lunch and dinner? Give us an idea of how. how um, so we do lunch on the weekends. So okay. lunch Friday, uh, sorry, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. And then during the week, we're only open during the day. We're open seven days a week. So we start at four o'clock during the week and then uh, noon on uh, the weekends. Okay. So Alex is, is right. The thing I would say too, before we close out today is, just like I saw this on, on Facebook, and, I, and I'll tell you, it's interesting for me that the last couple of weeks, <laughs> I have really been contemplating just staying off of Facebook for many different reasons. I mean, there's some great things about technology. I love some social media stuff. Other things, I just can't stand about it. But, you know, this is kind of a perfect example. 
you know, I saw this on Facebook and I just, it struck a chord and I understand what it's like to be a small business owner. I've been a, an entrepreneur pretty much, um, you know, the last 30 years myself. So I have a lot of respect for people who start own businesses of any sorts. And on top of that, it's right here in our community. Um, you know, I work in Las Gatas, live in Willow Glen. This is right here in Las Gatas, around the corner from our office and where we do the studio. So same concept as Alex said, you know, on Facebook, social media, whatever you could do to share this, like this stuff, you don't know who it's going to touch. And the other thing I would say, uh, I mean, I know a couple of attorneys, so I'm going to get this information to them and see if they're willing to give any insight or, you know, I'm not going to speak for them. Maybe there's some pro bono or maybe there's some things that they could suggest on a legal perspective that I'll, uh, I'll be sharing with a couple of my friends. So if, if anyone that's listening to this podcast, as Alex said, it doesn't always have to be about money. Could be someone you know, could be someone you want to share this with. Do you think that might have an impact? And I think that would be the message, Alex, that I think you just said that it's, uh, that it's very valuable to, you know. To yeah. Because the main thing is that what we said earlier, we're all in this together, no matter right. what. Any one of us can get sick. Any one of our loved ones can die from this. Like we're right. all in this together. That's why I don't understand how you can be so ruthless in the midst of knowing that we're fighting this thing together, that you can go out and file a lawsuit without even letting someone know. Right. Right. Like I would not like, let's say they would have been a mom and pop landlord. They were desperate for the money. Uh, they really needed them. And they were like, hey, if you don't pay me something, I don't have a choice but to go to court and try to get some money because I need the money or I'm going to lose my house where my family lives. Right. Like I would have, I would have said, okay, here, let's come up with a deal. I would love to, you know, work something out. But like, that's not what happened. They just like cutthroat straight to the freaking mm -hmm. lawsuit. And like, they know how terrifying it is. And they know that most, you know, tenants would just come crawling and saying like, I don't want to be in a lawsuit. There's the rent. But like, I can't do that. Yeah, I can't. I, it's against my belief. Maybe it's the Viking blood in me, you know, like growing up as like a barbarian or whatever. Like, I don't know. Like, I just can't sit on the sidelines and watch people get away with bullying other people like this. Like, you don't kick people when they lay down. That's the number one rule in playgrounds. Yeah, that's a good point. Is it is it wrong or is there legal issues or perspectives around the fact that, I mean, do you want to mention the landlords or the corporation's name that, that did this, or is that not wise or do you want one? Do um, I don't think there is like any real repercussions to do it, but it's already public in the okay. lawsuit. It's already okay. on the Facebook page. Right. I just don't prefer for it to come out of my mouth. It's just my it. principle. I don't know. I just try to be the, the bigger person always. And, and this fight is not necessarily with that particular landlord. This is to protect all small businesses. Yeah. Good point. All right, well, before we uh, finish up here, Alex, again, remind everyone, if you have, again, websites, information, any contacts, uh, anywhere. And again, remember, if you could also just quickly remind them of your different locations to keep them aware of that as well. Yeah, sure. Uh, they can come down to uh, Los Carros, Campbell, here locally. And then obviously Mountain View is not open yet because we can't. We don't have a dining room open yet. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Burlingame up in the San Mateo area, right on the mm -hmm. corner there of Burlingame Avenue in California. And then, of course, Las Vegas, if they ever make it out there. Very good. Well, Alex, we'll, uh, we'll stay in touch. I have some ideas myself how we could uh, do some you know, help in some additional ways. And then um, on top of that, I think it wouldn't be – it certainly wouldn't help to um, – to do this podcast and have you on maybe every couple of weeks or so just to get us updated and you know repetition is a good thing on something like this so we'll, we'll do that and commit to that for you as well yeah i'll be happy to uh to come back on and um anyone who hears this who feels like this is wrong and and do want to stand up for small business you know we're doing this two o'clock tomorrow oh, uh, in right. Palo Alto, okay. and um we'll bring some sandwiches and some uh some boards for people to hold up and hopefully we can get the media out there to come support. Okay. And that's two o'clock tomorrow. Is there an address somewhere? Or do you want to give that out now? If people want to participate? Yeah, sure. The address is going to be two, three, nine, zero El Camino Real. All right, Alex, thanks it's again. In for Palo Alto. Their office is in Palo Alto. So that's where we're rallying tomorrow. Very good. All right. Well, we'll, so uh, much. 
Yeah, we'll continue to share the social media. We'll share this, of course. This is this podcast will go out uh, tonight, later tonight, and get distributed out. So hopefully, we could uh, help in any way we can. But keep the keep the fight, and know that uh, you do have a lot of people uh, helping to support you around the community and the neighborhood. Appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. I thank you so much, Joe. Have a good one. Yeah, Alex, take care of yourself. All right. Okay, you too. Take Bye-bye. care. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks again for tuning in, and thank you for supporting any way you can Alex Holt and the Flights Restaurant going through a tough time. You explain the legal battle they're going through. It's just, it's just a shame. It's, it's disgusting, really, what this landlord would do, and we need to get messages out like this to help as many as we can. And specifically, um, go to the Facebook page or just go to Flights Restaurant. We have many locations and help any way you can. Thanks again for tuning in. Take care. Have a great afternoon. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.